Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Rio's how-to videos. Today filmed on beautiful Hebgen Lake in Montana. Today we're going to look at how to fish a nymph in a lake, just like this. As always, we're going to start with some gear. I've got a 10-foot rod here, a six-weight. That's a good outfit for fishing uh, in a lake, particularly out of a boat. The slightly longer rods are more beneficial fishing out of a boat. Six-weight lines. Floating lines are very good indeed, of course. Um, but with today I'm going to start off by fishing some of the more uh, concentrated lines for nymphing and this is what's called a midge tip long. This is an in-touch midge tip long. That's a line with a six foot intermediate tip. And this is generally my starting line when fish are not near the surface because it's bright and sunny like this. This is a great line to start. The tip sinks at about, I don't know, a foot to a foot and a half depth, that's all. So you're fishing a little bit below the surface. If it stays bright and I'm not catching any fish, I'm going to go down with an intermediate line. This is our in-touch Camelox and it sinks about two inches a second. Great for fishing, say, two to five feet down. So between those two lines, you can cover most of the depths or you can fish a floating line if you want to fish a little bit less, less depth. On the end of the lines, I like to fish in a leader, of course, like everyone else, but a special type of leader. This is our indicator leader. And what's significant about the indicator leader is it's got a very short butt section. The butt section's only three foot long in the taper, that's all. And then it's got seven foot of long level tippet, which is fantastic when you're nymphing, because when you're fishing nymphs, particularly unweighted nymphs, which is what I like to fish, is you want a thin leader that cuts through the water, and a long taper inhibits that sink rate. So this is what the indicator leader has. So this always goes off my nymphing rig as these indicator leaders, and then I tie a tippet ring on and a bit of fluorocarbon like this. This is our 3X fluorocarbon. You don't really need to fish much lighter than that, generally speaking, than 3X you're going to get broken off, you're going to get some hard hits, it's good to have 3x, and fluorocarbon is a very good material for nymphing and fishing coronamids out in lakes like this, particularly when it's calm. And then the fly selection, well let's take a look at the flies. Here's my nymph box, and um, what you'll see is there's a selection of nymphs up here and nymphs here, there's a selection of buzzers or coronamids as people call them, whatever you like to call them. Uh, this is just a big selection and if you want a guideline and you're starting off just try different colors and sizes. Try a black one and a brown one or a brown and a green. Those are great color combinations to start off with and uh, I've got a damselfly is always a good one to put on. That's a great starting point. Uh, a brown fly but anything like that. Just go out, put on a couple of flies, start fishing, see what happens and change your flies. But check your regulations first because some fisheries don't allow two flies, some fisheries allow three flies. So check your regulations to know how many fish, uh, how many flies you can fish first before you go out there and get caught. So that's it, that's the selection, that's the gear that we've got, that's what I've got here. We're going to go out into the lake here now and float around and show you some techniques and hopefully catch a few fish. All right, so now we're out in a bay, we find a lovely little bay here. There's a bit of a breeze, which is always good. You want to try and find a little bit of ripple, especially when you're nymphing. You know, in a boat, the worst thing you can do is have noise, banging of boats and clunking around, because that pushes fish. The sound travels so far through water that you really don't want any noises. And in calm conditions, noise travels so much further. So try and find yourself a bit of a ripple. If it's a windy day, that's not a problem. If it's a calm day, just look around at the lake and look for water with some little bit of a breeze and a ripple to it like this. One of the good things to do when you're fishing nymphs with surface type oriented lines like the Camelux, Intermediates, Midge Tips and Floaters, get a rough idea of how deep it is and where you're fishing. So I'll just stick my rod in. I know I've got a 10 foot rod, poke it down till I touch bottom, right there I'm touching the mud here. So I know that I'm fishing in about six foot of water, six to seven foot of water, that's a good guideline. So I've got a rough idea of how deep it is here and uh, that plays into how fast I retrieve the flies. If I'm fishing really shallow water, I'm going to move flies a little bit quicker to stop them sinking, and in deep water you can fish them quite a bit slower. It also controls the size of fly. Anyway, more on that later. Let's just get out here and show you a couple of things about how to fish nymphs in the water. And what you've got to remember is that nymphs are natural. So what you're trying to do is you're imitating a natural. The fish is feeding on these, expecting it to be a natural fly. And that really means in your head, you're trying to make it swim like a natural. So when you're fishing nymphs and stuff like that, you tend not to want to fish them super fast and strip them in like you would with a streamer. That's it. abnormal, fish don't, they might take it. You always get some crazy fish that does things like that. But your percentage way is to try and make your fly fish as natural as possible in the water. And that's mostly on how you retrieve it, what you do with this hand. So let's get out here. We've got this area where, as I said, where we're going to fish where the ripple is. And when I've got long leaders, I tend to stick my point fly further up the guides so that I don't have any leader inside my rod rings. Very important, keep a bit of fly line, make it easy to cast. And rather than me reaching out, a really simple tip is you just give the rod a little tap 
and the fly will drop out the rod ring so it's ready to fish. You don't have to mess around reaching for it. Once you've got your fly lined out, just a question of making your cast. And really right in this first cast, less fish are rising, then you haven't got a particular target. You're just casting it downwind across a ripple. Remember the flies are wet flies here. They sink, I've got a midge tip line on here that's gonna sink. So you give it a few seconds to start sinking and then you're gonna worry about the retrieve. Now, nymphs tend to swim up and drop back or they can swim sideways and swim along like that, but they're not fast movers. Your retrieves, there's one called the figure of eight and the figure of eight is a very, very effective nymphing retrieve. And this is what you do with your figure of eight. Is you pinch it with your thumb and index finger, right by this thumb and index finger, and just twist your hand up, pulling about three inches of line like so. And you close your three fingers on it twist your hand down, grab it, pull up, twist it down, grab it, and keep this little figure of eight or hand twist. Some people call it hand twist. Either way, it doesn't matter what it's called. The important thing is you get a very smooth, continuous movement with your nymph. And that's very good. You don't get nymphs just stopping and starting in the water. You just work your nymphs in like this. So this is a really effective nymphing retrieve. Nymphs Nothing in, natura, uh, sorry, nothing in nature swims in a constant repetitive speed. So you don't want to do the same. You don't want to just get into the zone where you're just doing this figure of eight at one speed. I like to speed up a little bit, slow down, stop, speed up, slow down, long ones, drop, slow it down. So in other words, you're mi mixing and matching how you retrieve your nymphs. And all your time you're doing that, you're waiting for a grab. You're never going to see a take with nymphing. Your nymphs are underwater. We've got a midge tip line on here that's underwater. So you're never going to see. So really what you're focusing on for the grab is this feel. So slow figure of eighting, working the line, pause, just figure eight. And what you are watching for all the time is you've got to be observant in lakes. Even though you've got nymphs on, if a fish rises, they'll take a nymph very easily. So whilst you're fishing, you still want to scan the water, just kind of keeping an idea out, looking around for a rising fish. And if a fish rises, obviously you pick your nymphs up, cast to it and do the same thing, aiming at the rising fish. So that's the basic technique of fishing nymphs. As I said, right now I've got this, this midge tip long line on. If I don't get fish for a bit, I'm going to change to a Camelux line, an intermediate line, get a little bit deeper if I feel that the fish are down because of the bright light. If I see, start to see a fish rise or a number of fish rising, I'll change to a floating line. But most of the time, you're going to be doing the same sort of retrieve, just changing it, varying it up, keeping your eyes peeled, looking around and waiting for a fish to rise. And the last couple of tips I can give you on this is look at the tip ring of your rod. When you're fishing, you do not want to have your rod pointing straight down at water level, pointing at the fly line because when you're retrieving, you will have no give if a fish takes your nymphs really hard and you'll snap off almost every single grab like that. So when I'm fishing nymphs, streamers, anytime I'm retrieving the line, I like to have my rod raised up a foot or so. There's a loop of slack hanging down and I also like my rod slightly angled away from the line. So if I do get a savage grab, it's not gonna pop off and break me. And then once you've retrieved your fly all the way back to the boat, and remember, because you're in a boat, you might have fish right underneath you. So you want to continue that retrieve, that variety of retrieve, all the way back to the boat. Once you've got it to the boat, one of the most important things not to do is just lift off and cast, because you will get fish following it. And when you lift off and cast, your chance is gone. You'll frequently see the swirl where a fish really wanted the fly and refused it because it's no longer there. So when you finish your retrieve and you've got about six to 10 feet of line outside, just begin a nice, slow, steady lift, watching your line, watching your leader, and then when your flies are out of the water, just make your cast and pop it back there again. There he is. Nice. All right. All right. Very nice. Oh. Well, that was a shame. Came close to getting a fish on the midge tip there and the nymphs, good grab, beautiful take, nice hook set. Fish just came off in the weeds. That's what happens when you're fishing. You don't land everything, sadly. Really more than catching fish, the idea of these videos is to give you the knowledge to go and catch fish. Hey, if I can't do it, hopefully you can do it. And the idea, as I said, of this video is to catch fish in a lake and how to know how to fish nymphs. Just in quick summary of nymph fishing in a lake, fish your naturals, fish your imitations, try and make sure they swim as natural as possible, vary up your retrieve, look for rising fish and fish floating lines. If they're not on the surface, maybe a midge tip or even an aqualux or even a camelux or some sinking lines to get down. Search the depths, Search and change your retrieves, change your flies, you'll catch fish. 
Hopefully you enjoyed that episode of How To, How To Fish An Nymph In A Reservoir or How To Fish An Nymph In A Lake. If you did, keep tuned, stay tuned to the Rio website, check out the other videos we have there. We have a whole bunch of how-to videos. Thank you ever so much for watching.